time to pick a side. We don't have time to waste anymore. We've all heard of the notorious organisation Just Stop Oil, but who exactly are they? My name's Med and I'm exposing the truth about the widely debated group. Come with me as I speak to both the masterminds behind the viral protests and the ones that get pissed off by them. You don't deserve to live. Oh, the f out of the way! No! It's gonna be a revolution against the violence and we have a plan. To be honest, I don't think anything's gonna stop them. Like, I would do anything. Rishi and Starmer, what is wrong with you? You're gonna wanna stay tuned as I attend a Just Up Oil protest training session myself. Just Stop Oil. Just Stop Oil. Just Stop Oil. Just Stop Oil is an activist group in the UK that stages disruptive protests against fossil fuel use. Ow! Ow! No, 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 no! Just Stop Oil gained widespread attention through their protests at cultural and public sites like art galleries and roads. While some commend their efforts to highlight in the climate emergency, Others view these tactics as alienating and potentially hazardous. <laughs> to begin my deep dive into the world of extreme climate activism, I wanted to find out what the general public actually thinks about Just Up Oil. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say Just Up Oil? Paint. A nuisance. Protests. Traffic stopping. Climate change. Ambulances queuing up. What do you think about the tactics used by Just Stop Oil? It's a disgrace. They need to be even more radical. If we don't do stuff that affects the current economy, it's, we're not doing anything. They don't listen to protests. Well, I mean, I was affected. Like, they threw paint over my office. Like, oh. So, I mean, I was affected because um, I wasn't allowed to go in our, our front entrance. I had to go in the back. The destruction is a bit too far, and it's the people that don't deserve destruction. Go to the oil companies. Blockade them. As you can imagine, people were extremely divided on their stance when it came to the group. After speaking to the general public, I wanted to land an interview with a big oil advocate. I started by reaching out to media relations managers at companies like BP and Shell. Hi, how are you doing? Amazing. Um, what would be the best email to reach you on? Oh, okay, and what was your name, sorry? Oh, I mean, it would be great. Even if it is a chat with you, um, like if you're up for a quick interview, um, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, we had no luck. I wasn't too surprised that they didn't want to be interviewed, considering the content of the documentary. Moving on swiftly, I arranged to meet Chiara Saretti, a Just Up Oil activist and student who had been arrested for spraying the University of Cambridge in bright orange paint. <laughs> You're lucky I don't smack you in the hand a bit, you know what I mean? You don't deserve to live. Non-violent, that is violent, you cretin. Do you know what people did to, to build that and how hard they worked? Do you know how hard Non-violent, you haven't got a clue. You are so stupid, I could see a little flea with my tokens. My name is Chiara, I'm 24 years old. And, and I'm you're a f and you should die soon. Color. I'm in civil resistance. Just stop That's what it should be. Not just stop oil, just stop You have no intelligence, you would have a negative IQ, and you're unfit to breathe. I'm taking action at my own college in support of just stop oil's demand for no new oil and gas. Can you share what motivated you to become a climate activist? When I'm emotionally connected with, with the reality of the situation, the total emergency we're in, I couldn't sleep at night and no one else was doing what Just Stop Oil was doing. I just booked myself into a non-violence training and then I was on the road the next day. I like, haven't looked back, basically. And I'm guessing that also drives your commitment despite the clear sort of like personal risks. Like over the summer I was like on the road with like six other people doing a slow march. One of the um, people that was with us uh, got basically beaten up like on the road. Yeah, and like most of the country things were twats, but I, I really wish there was a better way of, of doing it. I, yeah, I just can't see it. You've described your conditions in the prison as appalling. How has that experience of imprisonment affected your perspective? There is, there is a lot of privilege that comes with, you know, sort of ending up in prison by choice. Those conditions are appalling for me, like, like they are for, uh, all the people that end up in there. And 
I really want to see those places dismantled. In winter, Wandsworth prison does not have eating. In Pentonville, there are cockroaches that is totally disgusting, right? Most of the people there are there because, you know, because of the crime or like just being homeless. The experience of state repression is brutal, like traumatizing, and it's empowering. The entire political establishment of this country has been going on national television, licensing hundreds of fossil fuel projects in the middle of a climate crisis, which, you know, if nothing drastically happens, will kill, you know, billions of people. What do you see uh, as the future of climate activism? Well, it's sort of obvious, um, revolution. And it's gonna be a revolution against the violence, and it's gonna be a revolution without violence. And we have a plan. My first slow match, I was shitting myself. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> When the air horns start yeah. blaring and, and everything. Um, have you got like... Yeah, have exactly. you got... Yeah. <laughs> you need to be like 100% present. If you have a really angry car behind you and you start running, mm -hmm. they're going to run you down. Basically. So you need to slow actually down. Actually slow down so they don't actually do be anything. Mad okay. Because right? so otherwise you're encouraging the... Okay, <laughs> fine. You're never going to find us like photoshopping pictures. Exactly, that's the it's thing. Like, we don't need to, we have enough crazy situations. Are there like other organizations around the world similar to Just Off Oil that are doing what you're doing? There's something called the A22 network and it's a network of civil resistance projects. There is Just Off Oil in the UK, there is the Let's Generation in uh, uh, Germany, then there is Ultima Generazione in Italy, there is in France, they're all similar projects of sustained civil disobedience in the climate space. Speaking to Chiara was eye-opening. She gave me good tips on how to approach the training. The next day, I arranged to meet with another Just Up All activist and student, Hanan Amor. Hanan was arrested after disrupting a performance of Le Mire's last year. <laughs> We had people going before, buy tickets, take pictures, like in the stage, like they're just like tourists. We really emphasise like the passiveness of, of the action, I think. You know, even if people are screaming at you, if people are shouting at you, even touching you, you just have to be in the zone. You're not really you, in a sense. You're, you know, the action. It's like a lot of people thought that we had planned to do it when the actors had their backs to the, and they were like, look at it, they planned it for, for when no one's looking, that could have been dangerous. And there are risks, obviously, but the plan was when they had the flag. That was when we were supposed to do it. Labour's is the one yeah. to do it at. Like, I mean, it's about revolution, yeah, you know? And we need revolution. Sense. Women did not get the vote by voting. It is time for deeds and not words. It is time to just stop oil. The suffragettes slash this very picture. Leave the room immediately, the room immediately please. Leader, you need to leave the room, please. Ladies it's and gentlemen. This room is closed. Head to exit, You need please. to leave the room, please. This room is closed. You need to leave the room, please, sir. The trespasser, this room is closed. You are a trespasser if you're not leaving the room, sir. Thank you very much. You need to leave the room, please. This room sir, is closed, you are sir. A trespasser if you're not I've asked you three times, sir. Please go to the exit. Sir, you need to go, please. Please go to the exit. Thank you for coming. Please go to the exit. This room is closed. That takes a bit more prepping than slow march here. There was a few weeks of Zoom calls and, you know, going through the legal stuff, going through exactly how you wanted to do the action, exactly when to do it in terms of like who's in the room. Don't do it if there's like kids in, in the art gallery, obviously. Oh, yeah. Take the paint in and smash in it. You know, there's like a loud noise and you've got to take that in, into account that people will automatically be like, whoa, what's going on? There's a whole bunch of things in play that we think about. It's not just we wake up and we want to piss people off. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually had a freedom of information request and they've 
never complained about, you know, said that they've had delays because of a Just Stop Oil protest. Because we have all of these measures in place so to avoid stuff like that. Live vicariously through this moment of like, I'm standing up for my future, for any future kids I might have, for people I love. I'm quite a passionate person and it's hard to hear people, you know, yelling, but at the same time, you absolutely cannot blame them. You know, this is, we're living in times where we're being lied to every day by several media platforms, um, by several people, politicians, people that care, or supposed to care about, it's their job. Yeah. I can't blame working class people for just wanting to get on with their day. I want to get on with my day. It's interesting to have that, oh, I agree with you, but I don't agree with the actions. It's like, so what, how are you going to do the change? Give me a suggestion. We will take any suggestion. <laughs> Email me, DM me, whatever. Like, I will do anything. Hanan wasn't the only one to open up suggestions to the public. The people at the training shared the same sentiments. We'll get onto that now. Yesterday we attended the Just Up All training. Um, unfortunately, we weren't allowed to film in there, but we did get a chance to speak to two of the JSO protest leads. We headed to a community space in East London where the training was being held. So I'm Molly. I'm a retired lip reading and managing hearing loss tutor. Today I'm here supporting the trainers. What do you have to say to people that criticise these sort of like protests and actions? This is the most important thing that humanity has ever faced. Um, if you can think of a better way of raising it, we're all ears. Uh, I know that a lot of very wealthy people have a lot invested in fossil fuels. And my message to the government is please listen to the climate scientists. Listen, yes. They are telling you what needs doing and right now, they are all saying there must be no new fossil fuel extraction and that's exactly what JSO are saying. We are not radical, we are following the science. We then spoke to James who was leading the training session. I'm James, I'm 25 years old, I live in Cambridgeshire and I'm a scientist. Why do you hold these training sessions? Nonviolence, nonviolence all one word, is a fantastic philosophy to everyone to learn about. It's really rewarding for people to come to these sessions which are held for free because you don't get this sort of training elsewhere. What is your desired outcome of the training sessions? This is only a taster session really and violence is such a broad spectrum. I would love people to go out and bury their nose in five different books about what nonviolence is. In reality, I just want people to know that there is a space where they can be safe, where they can have these discussions, work out what nonviolence could mean to them and think about whether they are willing to do something some would say radical, I would say required, and do it in a way that's safe and secure. Okay. If you've come here wanting to go and do some action, it's really important that you have these role plays where we have the screaming, the shouting, the swearing, there's no holds barred. One of the great things about training these sessions is I get to encourage people to call each other this and that. It is fantastic for people to work out how they respond under such a pressurized environment, but in such a safe and open space. What would you say to those who actively disagree with Just Stop Oil? I know that what we do seems a little bit crazy, but we've tried everything else. We've tried standing on street corners, we've tried signing petitions, we've tried writing to our MPs. We've been ignored. Our actions, they may cause some disruption, they may cause irritation. This pales in comparison to what will happen if we don't take any action. Rishi and Starmer and anyone else, if you're there, and all you care about is your own interests and your own money, having more money than you know what to do with and still not being happy enough. What is wrong with you? Why on earth? What went wrong in your childhood? What went wrong in your adulthood to make you think that you are so important that everybody else in the world gets to suffer just so you can have another yacht? Wow, that was intense. And now on to the training. The training session was all about how JSO want to create a non-violent resistance to make real change and teaching us how to do it effectively and in the safest way possible. We did a role play exercise where one group acted as protesters and the other group acted as angry drivers. And the protesters sat down and protected the line and the angry drivers basically shouted in our face. It was a little bit scary, but I feel like I've got the knack to be a protester. Overall, I think the training was eye-opening. They're there on a mission and they have a goal in mind. And to be honest, 
I don't think anything's going to stop him. As we close out this journey into Joster Paul's world, I've got to say, their mission is a game changer. Their bold moves have definitely shaken things up, but it's got me thinking about the fine line between grabbing attention and pushing people away. Some of their tactics might not jive with the older crowd, but then again, when we're talking about who's really going to feel the heat of climate change down the line, maybe that's not a big deal. Look, it boils down to this. Fighting for our planet means bringing everyone into the fold, even if we don't see eye to eye on everything. It's time to pick a side! We don't have time to waste anymore!